Hello there. I thought today I would share with you how I went about making my medieval cosmetics cabinet to take to camp. If you've seen one of my previous videos, the name of which escapes me at the moment, but I'll put it down here somewhere, you will have seen how my cosmetics were just on the table under my awning. Well, this is fine because, of course, I want the public to be able to get to them, to have a look at them, to maybe try them out. But things do get moved around. They end up on the floor, in the grass. There's a potential for them getting lost. So what I wanted was a little kind of display case that I could put them in to keep them tidy, but that the public could still have easy access to. And I didn't want it to look the same as my medicine cabinet. So the first thing I did was to go onto the internet and um, have a look for an apothecary chest, a proper travelling apothecary chest that either had doors that um, locked closed or had a lid that flipped up open. Yikes! They, the prices were just ridiculous. A really simple one was going to cost me 75 quid and that was just a box of drawers. So pick it up and everything would fall out. It wasn't particularly portable. The really nice portable cases, where well, they kind of start at £350 and go up to however much you fancy paying. So I thought I'd have a go at doing it myself. And here's how. I picked up this little hobby drawer unit for about 18 quid in Ikea. And this tin of my favourite wood dye from Wilco's. I've used it for lots of projects, I really like the colour that it gives. And as you can see here, I have stained the entire framework of the hobby drawer unit and the outside of all the drawers as well. But I'm not quite sure what happened to this one. To make the front and back covers, I have to measure the length of the drawer unit and the depth of the drawer unit and then mark that onto the plywood that I'm going to use to make the fronts. I've got 6mm ply here for no other reason than it was what I happened to have lying around. I would have preferred to have used 4mm ply, I just didn't have any, and you can only buy it in dirty great sheets, which I wasn't prepared to do for one tiny little project. As you can see, the edge of this particular piece of plywood is not square, so before I do anything else, I'm going to have to cut it square. So here it is, marked up, clamped up, ready to saw. Now I've cut it out, you can see that the edges are a little bit ragged. And the other side of it is absolutely filthy. The bottom edges are nicer, but this side edge is ragged, so that will have to be sanded. Now, despite my extremely careful measurements, somehow this little piece of ply happens to be too small. So for the next bit, I'm simply going to draw round the little drawer unit to make sure I get the right size. Here it is all marked out, ready to cut. I just use um, a regular Black & Decker jigsaw. You can see that there are a fair number of dinks and scratches in these pieces of ply and, and they are rather grubby. That's just where they've been lying around for a while. Thankfully, this piece actually fits the front of the box. To make it look a little more interesting and a little less of a bodge job, I've decided to add some nice decorative trim all the way around the top of the box. This means I've got to cut in mitre angle joints to make sure that it all fits flush. So the front and back bits have been sanded to make them nice and clean and nice and smooth. Here are the four bits of trim and these are all now going to be dyed with my lovely dark oak dye. Here is the finished cabinet. The little trim added all the way around a nice carry handle and a hasp and staple and no i know that the crosshead screws are not particularly authentic but what the hey the front 
hinges down. Little simple brass hinges. You'll notice that I haven't bothered with the drawers. Um, I actually found that it was easier just to have it like as a display cabinet. So all that meant was then I had to stain the inside of each compartment as well. Another little detail is the feet. These are actually very small doorknobs that I've stained down the same colour as the rest. I have some Templecombe grass there, look. Um, just to lift it up a little bit off the table so that when the front comes down it actually sits better. So that's the finished article. So there it is. I confess myself rather smug actually. I'm quite pleased with that. What I hope this kind of video does is to show you that you can take something that is designed to be used in one way and by messing about with it a little bit you can completely change its purpose and its usage. I have to confess I am rather addicted to the salvager and um, Kirsty Allsop's Fill Your Home For Free. I watch these programs and get all kinds of ideas. If you're just starting out, you're moving into your first place, it might be that you don't have a lot of money for furniture or for fancy items. There is a lot of stuff out there in secondhand shops, in charity shops, in skips that can be recycled, repurposed and reused. Not only then are you saving the landfill, you're saving money, but also you'll end up with something that no one else has got. Until the next time I see you, take care. Bye.